that it is in fact that curly blonde hair that is now tying her to the death scene of her own son. Yep, very true. And you know, since there was sort of like religious overtones to this case, I look to the scripture as performed by the band Nazareth, and there's a line that goes, Red Hot Mama, Velvet Dreamer, time's come to pay your dues. And the name of that song, and I'm gonna paraphrase now, is Hair of the Dirty Dog That Killed You. So that's what we have here. We have the hair of the dirty dog that killed that poor child, and it's going to be a hard thing to overcome for the defense. It's gonna be very difficult. I mean, they'll throw out some doubts. They'll try to throw out some things that says it's not as big as everyone's making it out to be. But the bottom line, it's the hair of the dirty dog that killed you. And like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's over, Johnny. You know, Donnell, um, she, she claims to have an alibi for all this, and they're basically saying all this stuff happened, all this bad stuff happened over at Uncle Alex's apartment. But that blonde curly hair is there. What are they going to say? Are they going to say that, that uh, uh, Lori uh, was simulating sex acts with her brother again, and that's how the blonde hair got there? Is that going to be the defense? What are they going to do here? I'm, I'm sure Al, Al, Al once is connected to this crime somehow, but we'll figure that out later. Um, but what's important here is that um, Chanley Painter says she was surprised. Vinnie Politan was surprised. But guess who wasn't surprised? The defense. This had to have been turned over in discovery. So if this was turned over in discovery, I'm sure this wasn't a big surprise to the defense, and they knew it was coming. So obviously, as we already heard, they're going to start uh, reviewing uh, these statistical numbers. Uh, and if those statistical numbers are vulnerable to attack, the defense is going to attack those numbers. Because the one thing that I always tell juries is you, you shouldn't convict somebody based on statistics. This is not one of those situations where statistics alone should do it. Give us something else. That, so, as you said, maybe if the statistics are strong enough, uh, a strike that, if the, if the other evidence is strong enough and statistics can get them over the top, maybe but not just alone on statistics. So, so far, they haven't been doing good on the hard facts, and they're going to continue to hammer away at these statistics, saying this shouldn't get us over, over the um, plate, on plate. All right, Renee, I have some stats to throw at you, but I just want to ask Al real quickly. Um, Al, how many people are in the world, do we know? Ballpark it? I don't even know. Two, carry the one. About, like, 12. 12. Well, <laughs> Renee, here's the thing. They're saying it's... One in 71 billion. So I, th I don't think there's 71 billion people on Earth. So I think it's her hair. Except for my Twitter followers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, I think that they will have a harder time um, discrediting the fact that it is Lori's hair. The issue that I have is that I don't think that that is necessarily the smoking gun in this case because the defense will be able to argue that there are other reasons why that hair ended up in that location. Well, well sure, Renee, it's Renee and explain it's it to me. Re explain it to me. Again, it's not well, on JJ. Hair... It's not on JJ. It's on the bag that is used to wrap his body for a murder right. that Lori says took place at Uncle Alex's apartment. Other people who have been around Lori. Lori has been in other places. The hair could be transferred on anything. It's one single hair, right? It could have been on someone's sweater, someone who is involved in this in this matter, right? Lori is not connected directly to this, although morally and everything now she else, is. Yeah, people believe now it. But, she is. but it's one hair that could have been transferred on another okay, article Okay, Renee, clothing, be, be 100% honest problem. now. Renee, be 100% honest. If that yes. one hair belonged to somebody else, right? Some Somebody else? Like, wouldn't you be pointing the finger at that other person? Of course, because that's okay. what we have to do. Thank you, have, you have to show that it is connected to someone else. But in this instance, Goose yes. and Gander do we expect, here. Do Goose we expect and Gander. that Lori's hair could be there? Absolutely. But there are other individuals that are alleged to be involved that have been around Lori. 
that it could have been transferred by. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's going to fly, but oh, this okay. is what the defense is going to argue. Okay. It's going to be a point of contention where they could try to raise some doubt. Now, there are so many other things going on in this case that it's probably not going to be enough to put reasonable doubt into the minds of the jury, but it's something that they're going to argue, and I say that it's not the smoking gun. Okay. If there and, are other things and there, that will help it along, of course, yeah. that's... But, but we do know it was not Darnell. Much. We know it was not Darnell's hair. <laughs> Is that, Absolutely. that ship has sailed. <laughs> that ship has sailed. All right, Darnell Crossland, Al Wunsch, Renee Hill with us the whole hour. Up next. Tammy Daybell's death was originally ruled as natural causes, but now prosecutors say it's murder. Tonight, we are asking, is there enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Tammy was actually murdered? Were you involved in a conversation regarding whether or not to conduct an autopsy? Yes. Do you know if Chad Daybell requested to have an autopsy performed? He did not want one. That was asked. Well, as we were discussing it, he was asked and he said no. passed away her heart was failing her come on come on is that really is that really what's happening here well in the initial investigation I mean the, the coroner sort of bought that and said natural causes she just passed away then her body was exhumed whole different story um, and we're getting more information now take a listen here to the testimony of two people who were interacting with Tammy uh, shortly before her death one was her teacher at a dance class, another was a co-worker. Take a listen to what they said. And in your observations, did Tammy ever fall behind from the rest of the group? No. Did she ever sit out or quit early uh, due to exhaustion? No. Her pace and participation was consistent with the rest of the group? Yes, it was. Okay, and Ms. Harris, you're not a medical doctor, correct? Correct. But from your observations of her participation, did it appear to you that Tammy had any physical ailments that impacted her ability to participate in your clogging class? No. Ms. Harris, are you aware when Tammy Daybell died? Yes. Was she attending your class in the weeks leading up to her death? Yes. I'm going to draw your attention specifically to the classes before her death. Anything that stood out or changed in those classes and the way that she participated compared to dates that were earlier? No. I also took a high fitness class with her and her daughter uh, twice a week. And in the weeks prior to Tammy's death, how did she appear to you? Uh, very healthy. She was in great shape. Did you have occasion to notice uh, Tammy's weight or appearance? Um, she looked healthy. She looked, like I said, in shape. She looked happy. And so I did see her that day. Okay. And how did she appear to you? Um, as always, she was happy, jovial. Um, as the kids would come through the lunch line, she would smile at them, pay them compliments. Uh, did you observe her coughing? No. Did she complain about being sick? No. And her heart was failing her and she'd been sick? What? Take another listen. This is Brenda Dye, the coroner, talking about her conversations with Chad Daybell and his take on Tammy's death. Did Chad tell you anything regarding how Tammy had been feeling uh, in the month before her death? Yes, that she was just feeling very off, behind, slower, 
uh, and the fainting spells. One specific time was at the temple as she was kneeling at the altar. When she went to stand up, she uh, passed out on the floor. He also stated she had very low blood pressure. So I asked if she had seen a doctor for that or been treated for that. He said that she didn't go to doctors very often. She tried to treat everything naturally with oils and natural supplements. Uh, he said that she had fallen uh, a few times by the syncopal episodes. Do you recall if he told you anything about Tammy having shaking fits? Yes, when I observed the uh, blood tinge, the pink sputum coming from her mouth, I started to question what that could be from. Um, I asked if she had any seizure-like activity when she had the syncopal episodes. Uh, he did say that when she had those episodes, she her legs would shake and she did have some convulsions. And did he tell you about the shaking fits prior to you mentioning seizures? No. So he continued to provide additional information uh, based on things you would mention? Yes. Getting two different pictures here, one that Chad is painting and the other one that like everyone else is painting, including the medical examiner who testified today about what he found after Tammy was exhumed. We determined her cause of death uh, to be the result of asphyxia um, and her manner of death to be homicide. And when you use the term homicide, can you talk about what that means uh, mm -hmm. in terms of your office? Sure. So uh, we did not certify Tammy's death in terms of signing the death certificate because she didn't die in Utah, but we make the same determination. A, the determination of manner of death, we have basically five options that are on the death certificate. A death can be determined to be natural. It can be suicide. It can be accident. Or, or it can be a homicide, and then there's a fifth option where you can determine, you can just say, we can't determine, we, we can't decide between which of these options it is, depending on the nature of the case. Um, those, that, that determination is a, an administrative function uh, that is uh, performed for vital records purposes, um, is recorded on the death certificate, and is used to broadly categorize the types of deaths that happen in a given location, uh, so that, uh, you know, efforts can be made to try and prevent different types of death and be aware of the different uh, categories and classes of deaths that happen in a non-natural way. And when you talk about the term asphyxia, uh, can you tell the jury what you mean by that term? Sure. Asphyxiation is simply a process by which a person uh, is deprived of, of oxygen. They're not allowed to, to uh, breathe or uh, intake sufficient oxygen to allow their uh, life to continue. And that can be by any number of different means. Asphyxia is a very broad category uh, that includes uh, deaths from, you know, technically drowning is an asphyxial death. Any kind of suffocation or smothering uh, is an asphyxial death. Hanging deaths tend to be uh, asphyxial deaths. Um, and there are also chemical asphyxiants. Carbon monoxide, for example, impairs a person's ability to use oxygen. But broadly speaking, we use that term uh, to apply to cases where someone is unable to get uh, sufficient oxygen into their system to allow them to continue living. Let's bring back in our think tank, Al Wunsch, Darnell Crossland, Renee Hill. Uh, Darnell, is this uh, sounding to you like a murder? I mean, Chad's describing one thing, but everybody else is describing something else. Zumba classes, dance class, and, and, and Chad's trying to sell that her heart's failing. Well, you know I'm a skeptic, um, so uh, as a skeptic would, I, I don't like the fact that the Emmy's office, um, you know, plays around with cause and manner. It seems to be too subjective to me, and in this particular case, there wasn't any uh, cause and manner at the beginning, and then when they resumed the body, they came up with a uh, 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 cause. Uh, they didn't come and up. Manner. They finally did an autopsy because he he refused to have the have an autopsy done initially. Well, yeah, okay, um, all right. But but typically, when when there's a murder scene or, or they think it's a murder scene, you don't get a choice. It's like a murder scene investigation. Right, but he talked so. he talked the coroners out of it. He talked the coroners yeah. out of it. 
small town, small town stuff, yeah. I guess. Renee, is this, is this sounding like murder to you? This one is sounding like murder to me here, and it sounds like it's pointing directly at Chad. So all of this is coming out during Lori's trial, and they're saying that she conspired with him to do this, but there's been no evidence that she conspired on this homicide. Well, she was shopping for wedding rings while she was that still alive. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. Okay. All right. All right. Well, well, we'll get to that another. I, first, we got to prove that this is a murder, Al. Are they proving that this is a murder? Because that's step one. Step two, maybe uh, next week we'll deal with tying Lori to the murder. <laughs> okay, that makes sense to me. But I, the one thing I've got a problem with is that, I mean, it's a pretty kind of a gutsy move to, like, uh, strangle your wife with the kid in the house. I mean, wasn't the he son was home? Work. I mean, isn't... He was at work. He, he comes was at in work. and... and but doesn't he come in at like a, and with, with a 911 call and, and everything else? Doesn't he to discover his mother and stuff? No, I mean no. it's like no. Chad said that she rolled out of bed dead. How many dead bodies have you seen roll out of bed, Darnell? <laughs> I was going to say me every day, <laughs> every morning. It does. It's part of the ridiculousness of all of this. All right, think tank. Stay where you are. Up next.